Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And today, we're going to get into a little bit of more um, crypto math. So a little bit of cryptocurrency math. I got another video called the Bitcoin pizza problem so far. And now, we're going to get into some more cryptocurrency math. And let me first tell you about like the impetus or the motivation for me doing this video. So I've been thinking a lot about um, sats or satoshis. Right. And uh, the good brother over at um, Bada Hood University. And by the way, I want to shout out everybody um, in the community in Bada Hood University. Um, of course, I want to shout out Corey and Jim, um, the uh, creators of Bada Hood University, um, for all the work that they're doing and the influence that they've had, you know, on the people um, and on myself as well. All right. Um, but one of the things that Jim and Corey always talks about is stacking sets, stacking sets. Now, if you're wondering what a SAT is, a SAT is like an abbreviation for a Satoshi. And if you're wondering what a Satoshi is, a Satoshi is a, a fractional value, a fractional amount of one Bitcoin, right? So if you know a little bit about, you know, um, cryptocurrency, you know that Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency. And you probably, you know, hearing, you know, in certain circles and in certain spaces, um, if you're not familiar with Bada Hood University and you're watching this video, you're probably hearing like Bitcoin this and Bitcoin that, right? But you might not really understand what Bitcoin is or how it works and everything. But, you know, that's cool, too. Like, you'll have time to, you know, do your research and do your due diligence to find out about that. But a Satoshi is essentially um, a fraction of a Bitcoin, similar to how a penny is a fraction of a U.S. dollar or a dime is a fraction of a U.S. dollar or a nickel or a quarter, you know, so on and so forth. Right. A Satoshi. A Satoshi is named after the, the pseudonym of the creator of Bitcoin, um, Nakamoto, Satoshi Nakamoto, Satoshi Nakamoto, right? Um, no one knows who he is or where he is, but that's just the name that, you know, was put out there, you know. So he's the, he's known as the creator of Bitcoin, right? So the Satoshi is a fractional amount of a Bitcoin. Now, the question you're probably wondering is, well, what fraction is it, right? Because I mentioned a penny. A penny is a one hundredth of a dollar. But a Satoshi is not, is not, be clear, a Satoshi is not one hundredth of a Bitcoin. I'm going to tell you what a Satoshi is. So, one Satoshi is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One Satoshi is equal to one hundred millionth of one Bitcoin. I'll repeat that again. One Satoshi is equal to one hundred millionth of what Bitcoin? Of one Bitcoin. And that's just why I like this video is good for your children. It's good for the youngins. Because what I'm, what I'm going to get into today in terms of answering this question, how much money is 175 Satoshis worth? And when I say money, I'm talking about U.S. dollars, right? Um, this is the same type of mathematics that your children will be responsible for doing in, you know, their middle school math classes or some of their elementary or even high school math classes because we're talking about proportional relationships. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about proportional relationships, right? And that's on the standards for, you know, whether you're taking middle years math, whether you're doing high school math and algebra one. Um, these are like fundamental skills that, you know, our children, our young people need to know. So we could use this conversation about Bitcoin and about Satoshis to drive that lesson home, right? So at any rate, um, one Satoshi is worth 100 millionth of one Bitcoin. So we have, think about place value. Here's our decimal point. That's the tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place, 10,000, 100,000, millionth, 10 millionth, 100 millionth. So one Satoshi is equal to 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. Conversely, we could also think about it like this. One hundred million sets is equal to one Bitcoin. That's the symbol for Bitcoin, BTC, right? So one hundred million satoshis is also equal to one Bitcoin, right? So they go back, they go either way, right? It's, it's different ways you could look at it. So now, if I want to figure out how much money is one hundred seventy-five satoshis worth, now let me give you a little bit more, a um, little more background. Another reason I wanted to do this video is because there are a couple of apps out here, right? And I just want to put y'all on, right? Because this is something that Corey and Jim always talks about. Um, and in the Bada Hood University, we always try to share the wealth and share the knowledge, right? So 
there are a couple of apps that you could download onto your phone, whether you got an iPhone or Android, um, that allows you and enables you to get free Satoshis every single day, right? One of those apps is called Fold, right? Now, Fold is actually a prepaid debit card that you'll be get put on a wait list for. But while you're on the wait list for it, um, you can spin a digital wheel and earn free Satoshis every single day, right? Even if it's just a small amount of Satoshis, those, those Satoshis add up. Those stats add up over time, all right? Um, and then when you, get the, when, you get to, when you get to actually acquire the actual prepaid debit card, then when you make purchases with it, the same purchases that you was already making, you pay bills with it, the same bills you already paying, you get an opportunity to get free Satoshis that way too, right? So again, this is about stacking sats, right? That's one of the apps. It's called Fold. So go, 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 uh, go into the app store or, you know, on Google, wherever, find the Fold app, download it, and start spinning the digital wheel every day. And actually, you don't have to wait 24 hours to spin it. You actually get to spin it every 20 hours, right? So for real, for real, you're spinning it more than once a day, if you think about it mathematically. The other app that I just got put on to is called Lolly, L-O-L-L-I. -L -L -I. That's an app where you can like go shopping online, buying the same stuff that you would already buy anyway, except you get rewards in the form of, you guessed it, Satoshis. You get Satoshis, all right? And every day you can hit a little, like it's like a treasure box on there um, for a daily stack. You could daily stack and you get a certain amount of Satoshis, right? Like you might go on Lolly and hit the daily stack treasure box and you might get rewarded with 175 Satoshis, right? So that's kind of like, that brings us to like the point of this video, the main point of this video. Because if somebody get 175 Satoshis and they don't know what a Satoshi is, and they don't know how much money that represents in the unit, in the medium of exchange that they're used to, the US dollar, then they're not going to care about 175 Satoshis. It's like, it sounds good, but I don't know what that really means. So the purpose of this video, so by the end, you'll know not only how to figure out how much money that is, but you'll know, you know what that really means. All right, and like I said, we're dealing with proportional relationships here. So there's a formula we basically can use, which is this. Um, Satoshis, so we call them sats. Sats over dollars equals sats over dollars, right? That's our proportion. That's the model for the proportion, right? And then we're going to replace three of these values with numbers, right? And leave one as a variable that we don't know. Because we want to know how many dollars is 175 Satoshis equal to. So for the one thing, we know that 100 million Satoshis is equal to one Bitcoin. 100 million Satoshis is equal to one Bitcoin. So we need to represent the value of a Bitcoin in US dollars. Now, last time I checked, Bitcoin was pumping, right? It's April the 13th today. When I, at the time of me filming this, recording this video, right? Bitcoin was pumping. Woke up this morning, Bitcoin was like 63 racks, right? One Bitcoin, $63,000. So therefore, we represent the value of one Bitcoin as $63,000. So 100 million Satoshis over 63,000. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do 100 over 63,000. Right, so 100 million satoshis over 63,000, because this this fraction is equal to one, because this amount up here is equal to this amount right here, because 100 million satoshis is equal to one bitcoin, and at the same time, one bitcoin, right? And this fluctuates, right? Because bitcoin is volatile; it goes up and it goes down, right? It doesn't go up and down as much as it used to, like 10 years ago when it first was introduced, but it still goes up and down. So we're just going to use 63,000 right now for the sake of doing this problem, right? I'm probably off by like a couple hundred dollars, but that's cool, right? In terms of us just getting the point across. So 100 million over 63,000 is equal to another fraction, which represents Satoshis and dollars. Now, we want to know how much money is 175 Satoshis. So we replace the word sats with 175. So you notice how we got consistency here. We got Satoshis on top in the numerator spaces, and we got dollar amounts on the bottom, right? Now, we don't know how much money 175 Satoshis is. So that's why we use an algebra. And in algebra, when you don't know something, you represent it with a letter or a variable. Let's call that X. Let's call it X. So now we got our proportion set up. So again, and this is the same type of math that your children will be responsible for doing in middle school and in high school. And maybe some of them in elementary school, right? So now the question is, 
how are we going to figure out what this number is? How are we going to solve for x? Whenever you deal with a proportion, one of the ways to solve for x is to cross multiply. Go diagonal, multiply this by this, and then multiply this by this, right? And what that does is that helps us to get rid of the fraction because we want to get rid of the fractions and we want to simplify everything. So I'm going to do 100 million times x, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to abbreviate this because I don't want to write all those zeros. I'm going to write 100m. Capital M stands for million. All right, keep that in mind. 100m times x, right? Because that's this times this. Then I write my equal sign. Then I write 63,000 times 175. All right? Now I'm getting closer to being able to solve for x. All right? Now let me grab my paperwork because I already did this math already. 63,000 times 175 is 11 million. 25,000, right? And we still got 100 million times x. Oh, let me separate that, all right? Now, my goal is to isolate x by itself. So now we're doing algebra. That's all we're doing. We're just doing algebra. So I got to get rid of this 100 million. Now, in order to get rid of something in an equation, you always do the opposite operation than, than what opposite operation from what was already going on. So multiplication was already taking place. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we divide by 100 million over here. Boom. And we also, because it's an equation, we have to be balanced. Whatever we do on the left side, we also do on the right side. We maintain balance and equality in mathematics, right? Because mathematics is very fair. So we got 100 million over here. So we're going to do this. Anytime you divide anything by itself, it always cancels out or equals to 1. So we left with just one X, which is X. And that's what we wanted, right? Now, this is going to give us our answer right here. Now, if you plug into your calculator, just like I did in my calculator, 11,025,000 divided by 100 million will give us 0 0.11025. Now, just like I tell my students, when we're dealing with problems, we're doing word problems, basically, because that's what this is. This is a word problem. And we're trying to find a dollar amount. Make your answer look like money. Make it look like money. That don't look like money. So I want to make it look like money. So I'm going to do this. Money is change, right? The, month, the numbers after the decimal point, we should go two spaces after the decimal point or to the hundredths place. So that's basically 11 cent. 11 cent. Boom. So that's the answer to our question. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that right now, right now, right? Because this can change. Because the value of Bitcoin can change, right, on a daily basis, right? But right now, 175 Satoshis is worth 11 cents or 11 pennies. Now, some of y'all might say, oh, 11 pennies, 11 cents, that ain't nothing. Why would I, you know, why do I need 175 Satoshis? That ain't a whole lot of money, no way. Well, the thing about it, thing about it is this. There are a couple things, actually. One thing is, you can do this every single day. So imagine if somebody said, yo, I'm going to give you 11 cents every single day. Now, it's no guarantee that you're going to get that many. When you either spin your fold wheel or you tap the treasure box on a lolly at. There's no guarantee, right? There's no guarantee to that. But this is typical. This could happen. I mean, one day you might get five Satoshis, you know, on the fold on the fold wheel. That's happened to me. You know, it happens to me plenty of times. You get five Satoshis, you feel like five. That ain't nothing. But it adds up over time. Over time, it adds up. And when you're consistent, you're doing it 30 days out of the month, um, 12 months out of the year. That money adds up. Also, another thing, time value of money. Time value of money. This is an investment. So if the as the price of Bitcoin increases, that means the value of Satoshis increases. Think about that. Keep that in mind. As the value of Bitcoin increases, because remember, once upon a time, I think just in December of 2020, not that not that long ago, Bitcoin was like 20000 for a coin. Now we're in April. Halfway through April, it's $63,000 for one. Right? So it increases in value. Right? It fluctuates. It goes up and it goes down. So, this is how much 175 Satoshis is. This is how you calculate it, right? This is, this is one way. This is not the only way. I mean, there are other ways to do it. I mean, you could do it um, another way. Just take the number of Satoshis you have, right? If you want to kind of be a little more intuitive, right? Because you should always have multiple methods of solving any math problem, right? Take the number of Satoshis, multiply that by the value of one Satoshi, right? Which we can also figure out. From doing division, from dividing 63,000 by 100 million, right? 
and that'll give you the, val the dollar value of this many Satoshis, right? And we would have got the same answer. But I just wanted to put this out there, throw this video together. So, you know, the next time, you know, I tell somebody about the Lolly app or the Fold app, and I tell them you can stack Satoshis. Because if you tell a person, like, you know, if you go to this app and, you know, you, get, uh, you can get a free Bitcoin, you know, they would understand it. But if you're not as familiar with, like, what a Satoshi is and how a Satoshi relates to a Bitcoin, then you might not be as interested. But now, hopefully, you have a little bit of an understanding, if you didn't already, about what a Satoshi is and how it relates to the value of a Bitcoin. And I hope that, you know, the mathematics wasn't too intimidating. Um, but if there's some things in terms of the calculations we did that confuse you, pause the video, rewind it, go back, um, you know, put a comment under the video, and maybe I'll do a subsequent video to kind of try to clear some things up for you. All right? So that's about it for this one. And please uh, like, the, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, as I always say, always remember that there's all this math all around you. Peace.